So these are notes for integrated one, 2.2.3. So we're gonna continue building some uh, equations and graphs based off of some situations. So kind of what we did in 2.2.2. Uh, so here we've got a whole bunch of different cards. So we've got a few of these that we need to take a look at. So I'll go through and do a quick outline on them. So we've got one there, and then we have another one. So we have a whole bunch of them. And what we're going to have to try to do is maybe figure out how we're going to organize these. So I would take a minute, and every single one of these represents a different rider in uh, the big race. So what we want to do is figure out, you know, what is one of the ones that we could do right now? Where we don't have to know information about any of the other writers. So really take a couple of minutes and uh, pause the video. See if you can figure out which ones we could do right from the beginning instead of having to uh, rely on other work that we've done in this problem. Okay, based off of the different writers, I think I wanna organize my cards a little bit differently based off of, well, which ones could I do now? And if you take a look at all of the cards at the top, it looks like they are dependent on another writer. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this card for Elizabeth and I'm going to move this up to the top because I think we can go ahead and do hers as one of the first ones. But I also think that we can do Leslie's. I don't think we can do the other ones just yet. So I think what I'm going to do just for the time being is I'm going to move those down to the bottom and then we can start sliding them up. and deciding, well, do we now have enough information to actually be able to do those? Okay, so there we go. We've moved everybody else down to the bottom. And if we take a look at this, I think I can go through and figure out what's going on with Elizabeth, but I need to identify my axes. So think about what we did last class with the video and what we should label the axes. So why don't you see if you can go ahead and label them. Pause the video and see if our labels match. Okay, so I've got my axes labeled. Now I think we can start dealing with uh, both Elizabeth and Leslie. So let's take a look at Elizabeth here. All right, so Elizabeth is 11 meters into the race after four seconds. So at the four second mark, so here's what I'm being told. At the four second mark, I know that she is 11 meters into the race. So I'm gonna go ahead and plot that point. So here we've got that point, that point plotted. Now we'll go back, but it's only 13 meters in after 12 seconds. Okay, so we have another one. So 12 seconds and she is 13 meters in. Okay, let's go ahead and plot that one. Hopefully that'll give us, well, it will give us a second point, which means we have enough information to actually graph the line. So let's go ahead and plot 12 comma 13. Uh, why don't you see if you can find the slope between those points? Okay, so you'll see I've got my orange work there. I went ahead and calculated the slope based off of the slope formula that we have used. So it's the second y, 13, minus the first y, 11, over the second x, 12, minus the first x, 4. So I went through and I subtracted those, gave me 2 over 8, but that simplified to give me 1 fourth. And I'm going to use that 1 fourth on my graph to try to get me some more points for Elizabeth's graph. So starting at the very first point that I graphed, I'm going to go up 1 and then write 4. And plot another point. 
And then I'm going to go through and do that kind of across my graph like we did last time. So just working my way across. I'm even going to go backwards. So if I went up one and right four, then if I reverse both of those, I think I can get another point as well. So I'm going to go down one and left four. I'm thankful I did because it just gave me the starting value. Okay, so let's go ahead and connect the dots here. And remember, we want to label this, and this is going to be Elizabeth. I also would like us to write Elizabeth's equation. So let's do y equals, okay, we know her slope is 1 fourth x. And then if we take a look back at the graph, we just figured out what the, um, the starting value was or the y-intercept. So we're going to go back and I'm going to try to figure out, so I just red boxed it, I'm going to try to figure out where that value is. Looks like it's at 10. So I'm going to put plus... Okay, I think we have Elizabeth's equation. Let's see if we can go through and uh, figure out what's going on with Leslie. So why don't you give Leslie's information a shot and see if you can get those points on the graph and then maybe write the equation. Okay, so if we take a look at the graph, I went ahead and I wrote out the slope as 2 over 1, 2 meters every 1 second. And she starts two seconds after the start of the race. So that's where if you take a look at my graph, I went out to the two second mark, so what I just boxed in red, went out to the two second mark and I plotted that as her starting. But it's not a y-intercept, so I got a little concerned. So you'll notice that I extended my y-axis down a little bit so that I could kind of go backwards with the slope like I did on the previous person's graph. So instead of going up to right one, I decided down to left one, just kind of reverse the process, which then allowed me to figure out what the y-intercept is. So it looks like it's going to be negative four. So if it's negative four, then I can write the equation as 2x minus four. Okay, now at this point, we have figured out Elizabeth and Leslie, but we need to take a look at the other people. Now, at this point, it may or may not depend on uh, whether or not we uh, do one before the other, but we do need to talk about this whole writer B. So if you take a look at the very last one, so the last situation down here, your ride with you ride your tricycle three meters every two seconds. Okay, we need to figure out who rider B is. So taking a look at what we have here, we can identify, and this would have been given to us, that rider B is on the card right next to the one that I just marked in red. So I think we can't do the one inside the red box until we know about rider B. But writer B is dependent on Elizabeth, but we know Elizabeth's information. So let's go ahead and take that card and move it up and let's work on that one next. So we wanna follow the same idea of what we have done before. So you get the same head start as Elizabeth. So if we take a look at Elizabeth's graph, the head start is the distance that they start at. So I think we can go back to Elizabeth graph and figure out what her starting value is, which we know then was at 10. So we know 0 comma 10 is going to be on this graph. And then it says, oh, gives us the rate. All right. So take this moment, see if you can pull the rate out of the words here for writer B, write the equation, and graph it on the axes. Okay, double check yours against mine. All right, well, let's see if we could do the one in the red box now. 
So you ride your tricycle, okay, and pass rider B. Okay, I think we have enough information right now to be able to do the one that's in the red box. So let's move that one up and start working on that next. So I think the first thing that jumps out at me with this one is the rate. So we know what the slope is. And then it says, and we pass rider B 10 seconds after the race begins. Okay, so what that means is that at the 10 second mark, we want rider B and, well, let's call this rider C. We want rider B and rider C to be the exact same spot. So why don't you see if you can graph that one and write the equation. So I wrote down my slope, and I haven't graphed my line yet, but what I did, if you take a look at the graph, I went out to the 10 second mark where rider C and rider B should be at the same location. And you'll see I have that red dot now on top of the green line. That was at the 10 second mark. Now I can use my slope. Okay, so I, I was able to come up with the graph for C, which is in red. I also identified it on the graph as writer C, and I was able to figure out what the equation was, because I know the slope, and by, again, you can go backwards with the slope, as long as you do opposite both of them. So if it was up three, right two, then I can reverse that and go down three, left two. So. I do have my graph for this one. Now let's take a look at the other two. So we only have two left here. And I don't think that they rely on anything except for Elizabeth or Leslie. So why don't we do, uh, let's see, let's do this one. And we'll call them writer, let's do A this time. So we'll call this person writer A. Why don't you see if you're able to create the equation and create the graph based off of the information that's given to you. Okay, so based off of the information that was given to me, I'm supposed to go half as fast as Leslie. So I needed to know what Leslie's rate was. So I went back up to Leslie's problem, which was in that dark yellow, and I saw that her rate was two. So if I do half of that, well, half of two is one. So the rate for this one is going to be one. And that gives me my slope. So remember it is one over one, so up one, right one. And then my equation is gonna be y is equal to one x plus four. But you guys know we don't need the one. So we could actually just write it as y equals x plus four. Okay, and then we have our very last one here. Why don't you see if you can figure out, and let's call this person writer D. So much like the other writer where I had that they caught up at one point in time, I went to where Elizabeth was, so the orange line, at four seconds. So if you take a look at the orange line, I have a blue dot on it now. That blue dot corresponds to that four second mark. Okay, so now I still have that other point zero comma one. So zero comma one, I have to go through and graph it down here. Well, I think I wanna figure out where the blue dot is on top of the orange line so I can get another point. Now I know it's gonna be four comma something. I just have to figure out how high up it is. So let's go ahead and count up to the blue dot on the orange line. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It looks like it's up at eleven. Okay, now that I have that information, I'm going to go ahead and calculate my slope. So let's use my formula here. So the second y minus the first y over the second x minus the first x. I think that's going to give me ten over four, but think I can actually simplify that. So let's move that guy over a little bit. Let's see if we can simplify that fraction. And I know 
two goes into each of those. So that's going to be five over two. Okay, now from the zero, one, I can go up five and write two. And I now have an information to write the equation. Okay, so after using the five halves slope, I was able to go ahead and put line D on the graph. And then using my slope and the y-intercept of one that I found, I was able to write the equation for this. Now, I know that this seems like a lot. However, this gave us a lot of practice with using information of all different sorts to be able to actually write the equation and graph lines. Okay, moving on. Um, another thing we need to be able to do, and this should be a little bit of review, is calculating x and y intercepts. As a reminder, x-intercepts and y-intercepts are located on the axes. So if you recall up at the top here, we know that an x-intercept is always going to be written as some number, comma, zero, for sure. We also know that a y-intercept is written as zero, comma, some number. So whatever that number is. We're going to use those to help us out. So if you take a look at the first one for the x-intercept, you'll notice that the x-intercept always has zero for the y location. So that's actually what we're going to do to find the x-intercept. So let's take a look at part A. To find the x-intercept, we're going to plug in y equals zero. So everywhere we see a y in the equation, we're going to take it out and we're going to put a zero in its place. When we do this correctly, the only letter or variable left inside is the x, which is good because that's the number we're trying to find. So from here, we're now going to solve. Well, we know that negative 3 times 0 is just 0. doesn't matter if it's plus 0 or minus 0. You can keep it as minus if you would like because of the subtraction sign. But subtracting 0 doesn't do anything, so we can actually get rid of it. And from here, all we have to do is finish by dividing by 4. Remember, we divide by the number that is currently being multiplied because any number divided by itself is just going to give us 1. That's what we want. So this is going to be x is equal to, well, that divides in evenly. That's going to be 3. Okay, so from here, I need to write it as a point. So my x-intercept is going to be my x value, comma, and I plugged in 0 for y. So that's going to give me my x-intercept. Now, let's see if we could do the y-intercept. Y-intercept, we're going to start all over again, except this time we're going to plug in x equals 0. So let's go back to the original equation. And everywhere we see an x, we're going to take it out and put a 0 in its place. Well, we know 4 times 0 is just 0. Bring down the minus 3y. Now, you can eliminate the 0. It's not necessary. But don't forget that negative sign in front of the 3. And then from here, we want y equals. So we're going to have to divide by negative 3. We know that a number divided by itself is just 1. So those are going to cancel. And we're going to get y is equal to. Okay, a positive divided by a negative is going to be a negative. And we know that 3 goes into 12 evenly. So it looks like, got to write it as a point, we plugged in 0 for x, and we got a negative 4 for y. Now, the next question is just like this. So I want you to pause the video at this point and see if you can do it yourself. So it's the idea of plugging in zeros. So if you want the x, then y needs to be 0 because you need the y to disappear. If you want y, then you got to plug in 0 for x because you want the x to disappear. So give it a shot. Check your work against mine. See how you did. And that'll conclude the notes for this section.